Is America becoming the land of the free and the home of the delusional? Statistics show that the U.S. is losing big in education, health, and economic arenas. But U.S. citizens don't seem to be keeping score. RT correspondent Kaylin Ford reports. For this country they love. It's been called the city upon a hill, the beacon of democracy, the lone superpower, the American empire. But statistics show a different United States, one that is steadily slipping behind other developed and developing nations in education, health, and economic indicators. Life expectancy in the U.S. now ranks 49th in the world. Just 10 years ago, it was 24th. The U.S. now places behind Bosnia and just ahead of Albania. In child well-being, the U.S. has fallen to last place among industrialized nations. The intent is to maximize profits. If you denied more people health care, you got a bonus. People in Europe think it's barbaric. That's the term I've heard on many occasions. That there are 46 million people in this country, the majority of them children, who have no health care. It's also a nation where 44 million live below the poverty line. It's seen as an individual failing instead of a societal failing. So I think that people feel bad about themselves and it's their fault as opposed to looking around structurally. Politicians here in Washington have already begun to speak about economic recovery after so much hardship. But statistics tell a different story, as do volunteers here on the ground. Just two blocks from the White House, the lines for free food, free blankets, and free health care are getting longer, not shorter. It's not just homeless people, it's, you know, there's a new, um, unfortunately, group of people called the working poor. We used to pride ourselves on having such a strong middle class. The U.S. currently ranks 12th in the number of citizens with a bachelor's degree behind Russia and South Korea. And although Americans laud education's importance, they don't see the contradictions. The people who are potentially losing their competitive edge are Americans. This is a worrying future for a superpower that already must import tens of thousands of highly educated, skilled workers. Still, few seem concerned. Does the U.S. have the, the best university system in the world? Uh, yeah, actually, I would say the United States does have a really good university system. It's an engine of inequality um, because you have to take, either be wealthy or take on a lot of debt to, to get an education. And more and more people aren't willing to do that. I got a year to finish a math degree, a year to finish an engineering degree. And I just reapplied to uh, school. My financial aid should come through in January. So I'm making forward steps. But you're living here out on, this, on the street for the time being? Yes, correct. After U.S. banks received billions in bailouts last year, it seems no surprise that America ranks 108th out of 133 countries in the soundness of its banks. Credit breaks down barriers. It breaks down barriers for... For capitalism, allows individuals to free that they're to feel like they're breaking down limits. They can pretend that they're more middle class than they are. They can live beyond their means. That's true for individuals, Wall Street, and the country as a whole. The U.S. national debt is a massive 13.6 trillion dollars. The numbers are clear, but for Americans, they haven't sunk in. Compared to India, or say maybe China, or some of the third world countries, we are far much better off. But for how long is an empire merely in the eyes of the beholder? No empire is permanent. Uh, there have been empires that had illusions and delusions of permanence, but they all eventually fell, and the United States will be no different. And, of course, I think we are seeing the beginnings of that right now. And does it serve those in power? That mythology is very, very useful to people in power because it creates a sense in the American public of our own right to rule. And so when people in power, a fairly small group of elites, go about the business of trying to rule the world basically in their own self-interest. It's very easy to mobilize the larger population. For now, Americans seem content to keep the myth alive. Kaylin Ford, RT, Washington, D.C.